Hello, YouTube Sidekick here with another installment of It's Not You, It's M.E., our uh, series of videos on how to use the DCS Mission Editor. Today we're going to continue working on our randomized target mission that we started last time. Now, I did actually test the mission in its current state, um, and that went so well that I made a separate video of the test flight. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you already checked that out. Um, so today I just want to do a couple of things. Um, first, I want to do a bit more kind of automated testing, just to make sure that the random target generation seems to be working. So, you know, fly the mission multiple times, make sure we get different targets each time. Um, and then I want to add a new feature that we talked about when we were talking when we were planning the mission, and that is to add the ability for the pilot um, to call in a smoke mark to mark the target. Because as you may have noticed in the test flight, um, the targets can be pretty tough to spot. Um, this, by the way, is particularly true if you try flying it in VR, or at least it was for me. So um, let's just jump into the mission editor and um, get started. All right, so here we are in our mission. You can see um, that's one potential group of targets there. You can see the others um, that we choose randomly between. Once again, we have two groups of infantry fighting vehicles, uh, a platoon of tanks, and two batteries of artillery, and any one of those targets can be activated in the mission. That's how it works. Now, in order to automate it, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and pick our plane, and I'm going to change it from being pilot flown to being uh, flown by the AI. And, and that way we can just observe it flying, and that will make it uh, make this process go a lot faster. I can just, I can just run it in fast forward mode, because really all we want to do is fly out fly into the area of operations, and then just check that we actually get a different target every time. So uh, let's go out to the runway and uh, take a look. Okay, so here we are. Our AI pilot is uh, getting powered up. We'll just need to wait for him to taxi out to the runway. Looking good so far, and it's looking like a fine day in Mozdok. Clouds aren't really much of a factor. That's another thing that we could think about changing in the mission if we wanted to, is we could look at slightly more interesting weather, and that might add a dimension. Oh, one thing I do need to note. Um, in the test flight, um, you remember in our original mission, we had all unguided weapons. We had S-24s and S-13s and the uh, FAB 250 bombs. It did change... Uh, two of those S-24s, I changed them out for KH-25s, which are guided missiles, because I just found with the armored vehicles, I just I wasn't having a lot of success with the others, and it wasn't a whole lot of fun. So, um, so we do have guided missiles on board now, and you'll see that if you go check out that test flight. All right. Well, I'm glad to see that the AI isn't a whole lot better than I am at staying in the center of the taxiway. That's uh, encouraging. I do find that taxiing in the uh, SU-25 is a little bit uh, of an art form. I think it's because of the really short wheelbase. So he's getting himself set up on the runway here. And he's going straight into power up. Demonstrating the eyeball flattening acceleration for which the SU 25T is renowned. Not. Alright, and he's up. And he's going to get his landing gear up here in a second. And I'm, uh, I'm actually just going to put this in fast forward because this is interesting, but uh, not what we came here to see. Okay, so um, he's flying out to the end of his takeoff run, and then he's going to turn left and head for the area of operations. And when he crosses the AO boundary, um, it should trigger the random event that um, gives us a target. So just stick with it here a little while longer. As I said, I made a whole video of testing this flight uh, by actually flying it. Uh, I was really pleased with how it turned out, and that's why I made it into a separate video. I think it's... Uh, it's a fun mission. I've played it several times since. Uh, it does have a fair bit of replayability. It would have more replayability if we added more random targets, and that's something that we could do. But for the first try, I think it works pretty well. Okay, so we're headed for the river. The uh, boundary of the AO is roughly 
over the river, so we should be triggering the event here pretty soon. It's just enough time to get a few more uh, good views of our SU-25T over the Caucasus here. It's a nice shot there. All right, there. Our event has triggered, so now we'll go to the mission editor, or go to the F-10 view, I mean, and then, okay. So in this case, we triggered the tank platoon. We can see it there. So let's uh, let's quit out of here, and we'll go back, and we'll just fly it again, and this time I'll speed it up, and we'll just watch it from the F-10 view. No, no need to actually fly along, and we'll just put it in, in uh, fast-forward mode here. Okay, there he's taxiing out to the runway. And he's getting ready to take off. And there he goes. See it five times fast. The SU-25 actually moves pretty quickly. Eh? All right, zoom out here so we can see what's what. He's going to go fly down to the end of his takeoff run, and then he's going to hang a left and head for the AO. And somewhere around the time that he crosses the river, there. And this time we got the artillery battery. Okay, excellent. Let's uh, let's do it again. So we got the tank platoon on the first shot. We got the artillery battery. The, I think that was the first artillery battery on the second shot. Let's see what we do if we go through it again. And once again, we'll just go into the F-10 mode, speed it up, and just be a spectator here. Zoom out so we can see the, gotta go a little bit farther south so we can see the target areas and just wait for him to get there. And once again, okay, we get the other artillery battery this time. I think that's good. Okay, well, let's, let's just try it one more time. So here we are uh, taking off again, just skipped forward a little bit. And this time we get the tank platoon again. Okay, well maybe one more time, just to see if we can get something, uh, something else, just to make sure we're covering the bases. Go through it extra quick here. And there it is, and this time we got one of the. Infantry platoon. So I think that's a good test. See, a random effect seems to be working. So now let's talk about how we would add the ability to put a smoke mark on. Because as I said, these, these targets can be pretty tough to see from any uh, distance away. So um, you, you may not, uh, you may want to try and find them with, without help, but maybe you will want to fly a mission sometimes, or maybe you'll just get frustrated and you'll, you'll want to put a smoke mark down. So to do that, the first thing we're going to have to do is put in some zones because rather than putting the smoke right on the target, I want to put the smoke in a zone that's a little bit displaced. Uh, I find if you put the smoke on the target, then it's actually going to interfere with attacking the target. So so let's uh, just put some smoke marks uh, sort of consistently a, a little bit north of the target. We're going to use the control C, control V effect here. So I put down one and then I just need to go... Um, in order here. So this is number two. So we put it down, change it to smoke mark two. And this is because we're going to need to know which smoke mark to place the smoke on uh, based on the random number that's generated. So we do need to uh, do need to label them so we know which one goes with which. And this just happens to be the order that we did the uh, did them in. Uh, so this is number four. And then the tank platoon is number five. A 
number five. Okay, so now we're going to go into the trigger system and uh, I'll show you how you can set up a radio item. Um, so what's going to happen is that uh, using this trigger, and I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping here to give us some, some room um, and keep, keep our triggers organized. But um, while I'm doing that, the add radio item basically means that when you press um, your, your radio switch, usually the backslash key or a button on your hookups, you'll have, uh, there's always an F10 option, which is other. And uh, what DCS lets you do is add your own items to that other, that F10 menu. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to add an item to the F10 menu. And what's going to happen is when we, when we press F10, then we'll be given that option, usually as F1. When we select it, what's going to happen is that a flag is going to be set when we select it. And then, of course, as we know, once that flag is set, we will use the presence of that flag to um, do something. So let's uh, just first uh, put this in here. Um, and basically what we'll say is that we want this to be enabled once we've flown into the AO. So we don't want to be able to call for the smoke mark until we're actually in the AO. because That won't make sense if we don't. Uh, so flag 11 is the flag that gets set once the target is active. So we'll just, uh, that's the text uh, add smoke mark is what we're going to see when we press F10 and then probably F1. And then we're just going to give it a flag like 20 is what's going to be enabled if we actually select that radio item. So that's pretty simple. So when we select that radio item, now we have to decide what to do and what we want to have happen is when you want a smoke mark to appear on the target that uh, we have selected. Now, this is where uh, using triggers is not quite as flexible as using like a uh, uh, coding language because we really don't have an if-then-else functionality. Um, so what we're basically going to have to do is write a separate trigger for each different um, value of the random uh, number. So... so um, we're going to say we want this to happen if there's a target that's active. And then what we're going to say is based on uh, what the value of flag 100, which is the random, the target random number. If that's number one, then we're going to place a smoke mark uh, on our, uh, at our target zone called smoke mark one. Smoke marker, smoke mark one, and we're going to make it blue. Okay, that looks pretty good. Do we want to do anything else? Um, maybe one thing, maybe let's, let's, it's always good practice to set a flag when we finish doing something just in case we're going to, uh, that might be important. So let's uh, turn flag 12 on. Now, the simple thing is all we have to do is clone this four more times and we just have to change a couple of values each time. So we got to change this. Basically we got to change a bunch of ones, a bunch of ones to twos and then clone it again. And change the twos to threes, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'll just uh, speed us up a little bit through that process. Okay, there we are. Uh, we've got our five, um, our smoke mark call. And then we've got uh, each of the events that will happen uh, when the smoke is down. And then let's just add one more thing. Um, let's add a message to uh, let us know that the smoke mark has actually taken place. So in case we'll get to use that flag number 12 we put in. And we'll just say a message to all the smoke is uh, smoke mark placed or something like that. And we'll make that a different color since we've been using kind of light blue for our, our message events. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Um, and then we'll be ready to test it. Once again, important to save because there is no undo in the mission editor. Now, actually, while we're saving it here, I'm thinking, you know, there's one other thing that I want to do. So let's get it saved. And then actually um, testing this, we're actually going to have to fly it. We're not going to be able to test whether or not the smoke mark works with an AI pilot. 
So I think what I'd like to do is actually make a second aircraft here, and I'm going to make this guy an air start. And that's probably useful to have, because there's probably going to be times when we just want to go out and fly this mission quickly without having to go through the takeoff and the flyout. So I'm going to take him and put him out there near our waypoint one uh, and have him start in the air. Yeah, that's interesting. Ah, he snapped back. Oh, because I grabbed the wrong guy. I grabbed the guy who was still stuck on the ground. Okay. So, um, so now I had to change his, his, uh, waypoint type to turning point. Otherwise he wants to snap back to the airport. Okay. So now he's out here and, uh, we're going to have to change him to client. But then the other thing that we should probably do is actually, I'll show you how to set up the triggers so we can make this air start, start in paused mode. Um, it's sometimes a good thing to do if you're going to have air starts to have them start in pause mode so people can, can get themselves set up. You don't really need to do it for ground starts, but it's a good thing to do for air starts. So let's take a look at the triggers we can use to accomplish that. And once again, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping here. So this is genuinely initialization. So now I can uh, I'll put that up there. But so what we first thing we need to do is detect whether or not the aircraft is actually um, the air start guy. So um, first thing we need to do is detect, uh, we need the condition to be that um, the group that is active, the group that's alive is Ariel 2, which is our air start. So now if that is true, what we want to do is come down here and there's a command that we're going to use called X colon set command. And the number we want here is 816. 816 is active pause. And then we want to give ourselves a message reminding us that we're in pause because, oh yes, I have done that before. Wondering why my game was broken because it wouldn't respond because I forgot I'd set it in pause. So um, we'll just give the player a note saying the game is paused and they need to press space to continue. And then the last thing we need to do here is we need to get the game to wait for that uh, space. Now we could just, you know, let the player unpause using the pause key, but this I think is a bit more elegant. Um, so we'll go in here and we'll use another one of these X colon commands and we're going to say start waiting for the user response. And then when the user, that means a space bar, and when the user responds with a space bar, we're going to set flag 200 and then we're going to use that as the flag that tells us to actually unpause. So let's quickly just uh, move this stuff up to the initialization section. And then the last thing we want to do is set this flag to when we get the flag 200, which is the space bar has been pressed. Um, then we want to uh, set the command to 816 again, which will unpause the game. Okay, now we're ready to go do some testing. But I think that's probably going to have to wait for another day. This video is now up to a little bit more than 20 minutes. So I think that's probably enough for one video. So. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fly again and, and we're going to test and see if our air start works. And then we're also going to test and see if we can call in smoke marks. Um, and um, then we're going to get the, that's basically going to be our basic mission. Then we're going to talk about whether or not there's some other bills and whistles we want to add. So I hope you're enjoying this um, series on using the mission editor. I hope you're kind of playing along at home and making your own mission, even if it's not identical to this one. If you have any comments or questions, by all means, uh, put them in the comments or come on along to the Discord server uh, and let's talk about it. And for now, this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.